Where do you fish? In a lake. Oh, thanks. In a lake. How come my kids never caught fish? Bar Spills is a video series that takes you with us into the rural and small town bars of the Midwest. Together we'll wander into bars and interview people at random, creating awkward situations and sparking meaningful conversations, often at the same time. So come along as we head out from our home base of Minneapolis, driving on back roads in search of bars with character and the characters in them. I'm John the Interviewer. My son Henry is the videographer and will serve as narrator for the rest of the show. He'll also take over the interview when I run out of questions and have no idea what to say. So without further ado, this is Bar Spills. We left Minneapolis just a touch after noon and started heading northeast towards Wisconsin. After a couple hours of driving and exploring different areas, we finally went into a bar on the outskirts of Superior, Wisconsin called Bucktails. Dad was pretty thrilled about the name. I just saw the first bar we're going to go into. Um, it's, it's just uh, on the edge of Superior, Wisconsin. The bar is called Bucktails. And I really like that name for a bar here in northern Wisconsin. I'd like to repeat it for you. Uh, the, it's called Bucktails. And uh, this is our first bar. We're going to go into it. And I'm hoping that uh, these men are not too masculine uh, to talk to us. I'm hoping that uh, I don't know who's... We don't know who we'll find in here, but we're going to go in there and uh, and see if someone will talk to us. We ended up speaking with three people at Bucktails. Their names were Paul, Bruce, and Mike. I used to. I was born and raised in Superior, and then uh, and I moved out here in uh, 90. That's your name is? John. Yeah, we're from we're from Minneapolis. Okay. Father, son. We just are doing this little video show. I'm John. We ready? Yes, go. I'm just asking a stupid question. I'm asking uh, what um, what have you thought about more than anything else the past six months of your life? Has there been something that that you can't get out of your mind? You know. Trump. Politics. Yeah. Politics? Yeah. I, I, I shouldn't ask you which you side. You can ask me anything you want. I don't oh. care. <laughs> All right. Which side of the Trump divide are you on? I think he's a disgrace to this country. So, yeah. It's hard not to think about him every day with all the stupid things that he says and does. A corrupt media. Corrupt media? Yeah. How is the media corrupt? So one side against our president. Ties everything else on the other side. Won't even bring anything up. Other than that, that's good for me. The social structure of society. The social structure of society. What about it don't you like? It's too deep to get into right now. But I, you know, I promised myself I wouldn't get into a political pro or con Trump rant in these things. So um, here's what I want to ask. Take me through a... Um, a day in your life, an average day in your life. I'm retired now, so. Oh, so you don't have to get up in the morning and go to work. <laughs> yeah, true. true. Well, what'd you, what was the first thing you did this morning when you got up? Watch the news. Yeah. You, you are a political, yeah. you're a political junkie, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, I watch too much news. <laughs> it's hard not to with all the things that are going on. You can't bury your health, your head in the sand and pretend this is just gonna go away because the Democrats are, they're, uh, they're soft, they're pussies, they don't, you know, they, they the Republicans are hard asses and they, they go for the jugular. You get up in the morning and what happens? I, uh, take a shower and stuff. Usually. Take a shower, use soap? Yeah. Shampoo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then go to breakfast and uh, make sure Ma's up because everything's okay with her. You check on her every morning? Go out every morning and make sure she's okay. Pretty much. What a good son! What's an average day like in your life? You get up in the morning and then do what? Morning, you work. What's your work? Yeah, quite a work. Clip. Oh, yeah. Are, are you happy with the work? Yeah. What? Huh. What's your main hobby in retirement? 
drugs and alcohol. <laughs> uh, prescription Sorry, drugs. Dr Dr prescription drugs. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just build stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. I usually do a bunch of woodwork in or remodeling a house. I work on that. I got some land out in the country. I'll go out there and play out there. Whatever, so. Do you have a main hobby or something you like to do when you're when you got free time? Fish. Fish? How come I haven't caught fish? I've taken my, I used to take my kids fishing up north and we wouldn't catch fish and I felt like a pathetic father because I never caught, my kids wouldn't catch fish. How the hell, will you take us out as a guide and show me how to catch fish? Where do you fish? In a lake. Oh, thanks. In a lake. How come my kids never caught fish? Oh, Mike, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get to some interviews just now. Yeah, that was pretty good. So we talked with I think about three people. Uh, Bucktails was a pretty fun bar. I, I loved the people we met in there. And uh, let's go to the next place. Um, I'm having some trouble coming up with the the right questions. If you could, if you guys could help me think of some questions, um, just comment below and let me know what you think would be the best questions for striking up a promising conversation. Around and we're now in Minnesota, and the first town we've we've come upon is, is Carlton, Minnesota. Carlton, I think it's pretty small. Uh, I'm not sure what the population is, but we're in Carlton now, and we're searching for. We're hoping there's a bar in town. Okay, it's uh, yeah. We found we found our bar in Carlton. It's called what is it called? Three B. What does that mean? So we're gonna find a way to park and go in. We spoke with two random people at Three B, who coincidentally happened to be the bar owner and the bar manager. The bar was packed with people in a traveling billiards league who had come to play that night. So, uh, they let you bring Milo in. I almost forgot to mention that our first interviewee had a dog named Milo, who was also present at the bar. I own the place, so... <laughs> what? Yeah. I just yeah. So I can bring my dog if I want to. I just talked to the guy in the red hat. They told me he owns the No, he lies all the time. <laughs> no, he's are you the owner? owner? Me and him both are, yeah. <laughs> so we hey, can bring we... our dogs if we want. Um, I actually manage the bar here. So oh, I you're start... the bar manager! <laughs> so I started picking up extra shifts through a community club just to help them out because they were struggling a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah. What? What's it like selling pull tabs? Do you like it or is it... Uh, tell me about selling pull tabs. It's alright. It's fun. It's a nice extra little side job while doing other work and stuff. So I'm going back to school so it's easy to work on school work coming back here. <laughs> you're, run, you're not running an illegal gambling den. Are no. You? <laughs> you are. These are. This is legal. Yeah. Uh, how long have you owned the bar? Uh, about eight years almost. Yeah. Everyone. Eight yep. years. About that, yep. What's it like being a bar owner? I've never... I've, you know, Horrifying. I like it. <laughs> you know, it's fun too, but it's, what bad so, bad things bad things can happen. I wouldn't say bad things can well they can, but they can happen anywhere like that. So but any business, right? Any business is a can be horrifying. It's very gratifying. Henry, do you have any questions for him? I'm running out of questions. <laughs> um what do you think of my son Henry right there? He's a nice guy. He seems very nice. He's making me a little nervous with the camera. He's, uh, he, he, he makes me nervous too, but uh, Michaela, stop it. What do I, is there anything you want to ask us? That's Henry. Uh, let's see. So, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, we just uh, entered the town of Willow River. And it looks like there's one bar in town and it's called the Squirrel Cage. So we're heading in and we'll see if we can find some people to talk with. The Squirrel Cage was the last bar we stumbled into and was located in the small town of Willow River. We spoke first with Mindy and then with Lynn, who wraps up the episode by explaining how she recently found her birth father. Mindy. Okay, we're with, uh, who are you? Mindy. I am Mindy. Are you, where are you from? I'm from Hinkley. From Hinkley, but we're at a bar. We're at the Squirrel Cage in, in Willow River. In yeah. Willow River. Like my work hours, five until whenever. Sometimes I close the bar. Sometimes I work in the kitchen. Uh, Do you have any crazy stories about uh, bartending? Have you ever had to deal with uh, 
dangerous, troubling, weird situations. Tell us a story. What do you got? You got? A, you must have a story. You're a bartender. I don't think I can share the stories oh, that I have. <laughs> I mean, I've seen lots of fights and lots of drama. Okay, I'm gonna ask you something. Okay. Okay. What's been? Has anything been troubling you? What's is, has something been bugging you or troubling you in the past month? In the past six months? Wow. Huh. Yes, Gosh. maybe I'm asking you the hard questions. You are, not to get political on you, but in the past six months to a year, we voted a president in. Let's back our president. Whether it's who you voted for or not, he is our president. And I spent 12 years military, and for better or for worse, he is our commander in chief. I'm not saying everything he's doing is, is great. I'm not saying everything he's doing is not great. But he is our president. And we need to put everything else aside and quit bashing and bringing up all the bad stuff and just do our best to support. Okay, that's political. You said we're not going to get political. <laughs> I don't want to get political. I want to go beneath the political. Um, what, uh, what, what, what gets you through each day? What do you, what do you, what do you live for? Um, I have a beautiful home, I have a wonderful husband, I have great friends, I have a wonderful church family who I adore, and um, being able to get up and do my job to the best of my ability, and um, come home to my husband, and it's, it's not the job, you know, you, you have to work to live, not live to work. How long have you been married? We've been together for 18 years, married for 11 years. And he's still lovable in every oh, way. And I'm one of those pathetic ones that are madly in love with my husband, yes. I am too. I am too madly in love with my wife. What, um, what's uh, an average day in your life like? You get up in the morning, do you have a cup of coffee? Oh yeah, a lot of coffee. How many? So, um, depends so, on the night before. So you've had your coffee and then what do you do? Take me take me through your day. What do you, What's an average day for you? Oh gosh really boring. Come I don't on. know, I've been working yeah. on my Ancestry a lot. I have an Ancestry.com membership. So do I. Nice. I actually found my birth father on Ancestry.com. We both had happened to do the DNA test. Do you yes. think Ancestry will pay us for this? Henry, she found her birth... You found your birth father? Yes. So what does this mean? So you were adopted? Yes. At what age? Six. I didn't know my father at all. Did you I, know knew your my, I knew my mother. Yes. And I'm in contact. I've been in contact with my mother. Are, are you going to meet your father? I'm planning on it, yeah. Where is he? Arizona. And have you spoken with him? Yes. Facebook Messenger, and then we had a phone conversation. What was the phone conversation like? The well, first time you talked to your... Actually, I meant to text him, and I accidentally hit call instead. <laughs> like, all right, well, here we go. It was a little bit awkward, but I don't know. It was did pretty he, cool. What did he say? Did he... Did he, did he apologize, or what, what was his what was his story? Um, I actually got a way different story growing up about him, that he was kind of a bad person or whatever. But it turned out that uh, he was 16 when my mom got pregnant with me, and he actually tried to do the right thing, and he got married to her, and uh, then they split up. Then he went and cheated on her. Like, they split up. He Whatever. cheated. But he was 16. He was a kid. He cheated. He was a kid. And then he went into the military for 22 years, so he can't be that person. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was fun.